And I'd like to say, yeah, we are officially live. Sorry about that. Um, we are back. We just have some people about 10, 15 minutes to get on. There were about 60 people online, and we've been on before. So let's get people. I'm going to send out the email with the correct link, do the uh, necessary steps to get people to know where to go, and then kind of get more. Yeah. So we can use um, to go on the site and start the broadcast really. Um, right now, we're starting recording. So, for those of you who are watching this recorded, or you're here in person, or you're watching live right now, welcome to the Van Hag Red Academy webinar uh, plus the other. We've been doing a bunch of these now where we connect kind of people in the real world here with uh, guest speakers and also people online virtually. Um, and it's really cool interaction and kind of dynamic. We're trying to Push to connect many people from there to the tech, uh, tech community here. So we've already introduced, but I think I'll introduce again, Common and Math and Red Academy. It's a kind of new digital school in Vancouver. I'll let them talk about it more. It's a digital academy. Um, and we're okay. Our audio is okay. We're going to do some audio adjustments. See if that works. Is this better from my laptop? I'm sorry, from. Oh, so maybe next time we just go to webinar or something better. Um, so welcome, guys. Um, maybe you guys can tell for everyone who's watching from uh, in Brazil what Red Academy is, and then we'll just continue with our conversation. Cool. Okay. Um, so Red Academy is a is a tech school that is starting here. So we are. Uh, just just took delivery today of 60 chairs and 60 desks, so we have like paper and paint and all sorts of stuff that's in the space at the moment that we are working through very quickly. So we actually have next week the first people coming in for some of the initial sessions, and then the week after we're actually starting our first session. So those are in digital marketing, in UX design, and in coding. Great. So those are the three areas. Yeah, you're talking something about I really like. There's the three types. Of people that are involved in the technology world, architects, and then there's a couple others who I don't know. Yeah, remember. architects, builders, builders communicators. And communicators. Yeah. So you guys have something for all three. Yeah. Think about it, right? So, what um, you know, what what do you guys think that you know the future of education and careers? Where is that going? Why did you guys open Red Academy? Um, what what was that? Where was the inspiration from? Because there's lack of tech talent, or you guys saw an opportunity to innovate and something like both. Or, what was like, the, okay, let's do this one? Um, well, I guess, I mean, there's two trends happening right now. One is that um, people are looking for um, like hyper-relevant education. Um, the four-year model is increasingly becoming quite outdated. I think in parallel to that, you're seeing this huge gap in talent in the tech industry. So um, while there's also massive amounts of youth unemployment. So there's sort of just this confluence of, of perfect um, the situation was ripe for a school to come out to actually produce graduates that have the tech skills to enter the job market uh, and be able to contribute from, from, from day one. So there's a bit of a gap. Um, there's your sort of traditional four-year plan. There's also tech schools, or sorry, trade schools like BCIT, which is the British Columbia uh, Institute of Technology. But a lot of times it's like, it's not very focused. So um, you're spending minimum two years. You're having to take everything from you know video editing, sound editing, and they're teaching things that are completely outdated because um, they're a very bureaucratic organization that moves on like a three to four um, year time cycle. And there's reports out showing that 30% um, of information in the tech industry is outdated within a year. So that means that within three years, well, everything that you're teaching is already outdated, so what's the point? So that's on sort of like the high end of time commitment. And then on the really, really low end, um, there's this new emerging model, which is sort of the boot camp, if you will. And they're two months long, generally. And I think that, I mean, there is a value there um, for people who just want to kind of quickly get a really brief overview of the skills. But um, what's happening is that they're trying to teach so much in, in, in two months. You're going from the full front end development and back end development in two months. And, and it's, it's like going up to someone saying, hey, would you like to be a doctor in six months? It's just, it's, it's, it's a bit of an oversell. Um, and the graduates are coming out of that um, 
have a bit of a distorted view of how much they actually know, which is a really dangerous thing to have if you're going into an, uh, into a, um, an agency or a larger company. Um, and they're having to have people that are more senior mentoring them, which is a massive resource strain on any company because you got someone who's you know a senior that's maybe making eighty to one hundred thousand uh, uh, a year, spending all their time mentoring this this junior. So um, with sort of if that's the spectrum of time commitment, um, Red kind of comes in with that super ultra focused view on. All right, um, you're going from maybe knowing just a little bit about um, coding, for example, you taking a look at that stream. In four months, if you're only focusing on front end development, you can really push someone very far along that learning curve to the point where they're genuinely uh, at a point that um, they're ready to enter the workforce um, and have some training um, or further their learning experience on the job while they're not just an absolute resource up. Um, I'd say that uh, sort of the last comment um, I'll add on that is that um, a lot of these schools are the, the boot camps solely focused on on just development. Um, but as Colin has mentioned, there's, there's there's really it's not just the developers. There's there's the the developers, but you also need people to design things. And um, if you look at all the great companies that are popping out, it's it's funny enough, it, it's the design of them that's actually separating them. Why is Google why did Google beat Yahoo? It was because if they understood that all the user wanted was a search bar uh, that they could put stuff in there and then they get a page of the most relevant things. Or you look at Apple, for example. Why is it that Apple is um, sort of completely blown Microsoft out of the, the water? It's their design, their user experience is incredible. Um, so if you're if you're not teaching that, um, you're really missing the boat on on a lot of things. Um, and increasingly so, we're seeing that digital marketing is. Um, a skill that, if if not, I mean, it, it's a it's a role unto itself. People, you, you have companies that need digital marketers, but um, there's so many jobs and companies out there that are looking for people to round out their skills um, in digital marketing. So if you're in PR um, and you've been doing PR your entire life, well, the expectation is okay. I know how to put out a press release, and then I can also track what's the, the ROI, the impact on my work. And that's just one example. We've seen countless other sort of, uh, different uh, careers that are um, needing to kind of keep pace with this um, uh, increase in expectations of how much you need to know in, in the digital realm. Amazing. Um, so I was just want to take notes on everything that you're saying. Um, I feel like someone can, someone can do that. Like, um, I... I think that everything you guys are saying about these trends, I totally, like, who, who here agrees or has another opinion? Does anyone have a, a question so far? How do you, how do you look at these trends from the beginning? How do you start to know when you, after you start to see them out because you're telling about your history or people work with trends? What are some of the common denominators that you're using a full uh, red academy to, to identify the trends? Ah, uh, that research report. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if, if you're talking like very broad trends, no, well, or, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say like, like local trends. You can see technology trends. You can um, we looked at um, a whole lot of job postings in Vancouver, and we analysed like how many times certain technologies were appearing to determine, you know, should we be teaching Ruby on Rails? Should we be teaching PHP, ASP? Which which areas are are there jobs for you? Know? Yeah. So you're so you're working with that part of that of data uh, Yeah, we have like we're actually bringing on a full time analyst, and all they do is they study data and like not just you know inside the school, but outside the school to see what's what's happening. We have plans to grow into more markets, and that's about studying the data and knowing what their yeah. uh, requirements are in that local market. Well, yeah, I have kind of two questions. One is referring to uh, one of the ways you guys teach would be doing projects with local. I don't know, there's a tourist, somebody told me about an Aboriginal web tourism website where there's like 600 websites that people uh, develop. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, like, what, are the, what is the community giving you in terms of feedback now that you're saying, okay, say we're going to teach digital media or programming this is a basic content, that are people partnering up with you saying, yeah, we'd love to maybe look at your graduates and such. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, I think there's, there's two things as well. 
within that. So um, one is there is lots and lots of jobs out there. There are companies that cannot hire fast enough and they're not growing as quickly as they could do because they can't hire the people. And in technology, it's a huge problem. Right? There's, um, there's a stat from code.org where they say, you know, you need 1.4 million programmers in the next four years, but only 400,000 are being produced by the education system. So in programming alone, there's a huge shortfall. But of course, for every piece of software that exists, every website that gets built, it needs UX designers, and it also needs people that are then going to bring that to an audience. So, um, so I would say very broadly, um, there is huge demand in Vancouver for um, qualified junior staff um, that isn't being met. And I would say, secondly, the education space is um, radically changing right because it used to be you go to school you go to you get good grades you go to university you get good grades then you get a good job but that doesn't happen anymore you've got 15 percent underemployment now so the strange thing is, is you've got all of these jobs and all these young people with degrees but the degrees have taught them geography or philosophy and yeah. like, tech companies don't need philosophers they yes. need a program <laughs> yeah yes. you know? can you can you speak to the correlation between the demand for developers or just talent in, in tech uh, at, at itself and the model with expedited education so study 12 hours a day and tends to get the skills sooner so we can meet the demand for all. like what's your kind of thinking on that uh, my, my thinking is definitely like if you spend you know, it's fifty thousand dollars typically for a degree in Canada, right? Like, so you spend that. That's including your rent and all sorts. And there's something that's so the, the CDM, the Centre for Digital Media here, one year program, fifty thousand dollars plus. They say thirty thousand dollars extra, eighty thousand dollars for one year masters, and they don't even teach coding. Yeah. So when I see that, I think that this is all one big scam, and it makes me feel kind of annoyed that um, running a digital agency. I know that I can bring in Watch somebody with basic coding skills and get them up to the standard of a junior front-end developer with HTML, CSS, JavaScript yeah. um, in a three-month process. But it's, about, it's not about this old model of learning where you have the professor who stands there you know, waxing lyrical about all of their knowledge and that they're the expert and everyone needs to write it down and then we'll test them. It's about getting people working in real like real world environments, right? So in team environments, working on real projects, and yet Red, we've got a real thing, we've got lots of community groups out there who need websites, so it's, it's an obvious thing to say, okay, well, we'll bring that project in-house, we'll make that a project that people really work on, and it'll get, you know, UX designers to do the IA and all that stuff, yeah. then it'll get built by developers in a WordPress environment, and then our digital marketing people are going to get on the social media and start to build out strategies. Yeah, so sometimes like I realize my pictures of the uh, apprentice format, but I do find it more scalable to give up a high density of skills now and then send them out into the real world and we can develop on and on with the real jobs. So I think that's a great question. I think that traditionally it's always been like, okay, you do this education and then you're ready. And now you go and get a job as an expert. And the reality is, is that technology moves very, very fast, right? So if you get into work and you think, okay, now I'm good for life, mm -hmm. then that's not going to work, right? Yeah. So it's, our model as well is about placing those juniors and then providing ongoing support. It's an ecosystem approach of saying, there's students who are here who don't have jobs and they're missing some basic skills that we can get them throughout our process. We, we partner them with the companies and then to bridge that gap as well, there's additional training and support that's needed throughout that process so that you, know, you don't stop learning. I don't stop learning. It's kind of a, with this technology world uh, that we live in, it, it just keeps moving. So, so what are you guys most excited about for your launch? I, I just add one more point to yeah. that, um, which is that um, so on, on Sundays, we have something called Sunday service, or sorry, um, Sunday sessions. Uh, <laughs> that's church. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, there's a comedy group I go to, which is, anyways. So yeah, Sunday sessions, and um, the whole idea is that, that uh, uh, a lot of times you're going to be learning new sort of um, uh, brand new technologies on your little hacker problems that you're sort of putting together certain things, um, or maybe not. Maybe it's just you're working through your 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 course uh, material. But the idea is that we're bringing everyone in, uh, making our our space, our school. Uh, like a co-working space on Sundays. We have mentors coming around, so you are able to sort of learn the 
things that are absolutely bleeding, bleeding edge um, with sort of that mentorship support on Sundays. And then the other piece is that um, we have this beautiful event space um, that's like can fit 60, 70 people. And um, we're going to have all the like the most current um, sort of uh, technologies coming, putting, being put forward in, in presentations uh, through meetup groups uh, uh, through that as well. That's amazing. So yeah, like it does sound exciting that you're on, but like, what's your clear mission? Like, what's your so you know what the community is doing? You're seeing, assessing what's going on. What is the impact that you're looking to make? So in, in filling those gaps and bridging. I think I think we've kind of said that. The success of the school is measured in the success of the students. And I think like I look forward to the day that I sit down with one of our graduates who started a company, who's coming back saying, okay, I need a front end dev, I need a UX designer, I need someone to manage our social media. And we're like, yeah. okay, I've got people for you. Because it is, it's it's an ecosystem, right? Like yeah. it's, uh, it's really like, I think that how I see education is about, we're all essentially like plants, we're biological, matter right we're made of seeds quite literally so if you have a garden you want to have those seeds grow into the things that they want to be naturally right and traditional education system is like we put you all through this system and you're all going to come out as trees yeah. you know not, not everyone's a tree some people are trees some people are bushes some people are flowers whatever but we want to grow see those people grow and support in the direction that's best for them yeah and then you know go and start a garden of their own you know oh that sounds extremely Exciting. Uh, so, in terms, what what are you what are you offering people? What do you why do you recommend people make your program? Why why are you looking for students right now? And, and what do you think you're going to be able to do to change their life for the positive? And everything you're saying is positive. But reflecting more on. I th I think you know the the biggest satisfaction I get from having run an agency is seeing people come in super junior and being a bit unsure and going uh, not really sure what I'm meant to be doing. And you know, like two, three years later, being like lead developers, getting really good salaries, taking holidays, starting to plan for weddings and mortgages, and seeing their lives being put together by really the skills that they've developed. Um, so I think education is kind of such a cool space to be in. It's uh, it's just super rewarding. I mean, it's it's just it's an it's an endless. You know, those million developers. We're not going to produce a million developers. Yeah. Like. Um, we're not even going to be like one percent if we try it <laughs> after our artists, you know. So you know, it's <laughs> but I think that's the, the the it's just like it's it's limitless the amount of work that can be done in, in educating, and it's good for the students, it's good for the companies, and the more people know, the more everything grows, the more they'll hire more yeah. juniors. It's just like about the health of the overall you know, ecosystem. So if I have an old Brazilian that wants to kind of get a job. I do. I mean, I'd like to know more about the, um, like being an international person, having come to Vancouver myself, um, I think that there is, you know, for, for whatever reason, there is governments that decide, okay, well, this person deserves a piece of paper and this one doesn't deserve a piece of paper. And, you know, we've kind of like put lines on the world map and said, this is one country, this is another. But I mean, essentially, I've got family all around the world. I think it should be much freer. I think people should be able to go and live in the country where they can contribute. I think the mentality is often like, oh, we don't want people coming in here and stealing our jobs. But that's actually a stupid way of looking at it. The real scientific truth of it is if you bring in smart people that contribute to your economy, that pay more taxes, that employ people, then you're gonna have a much healthier um, economic system overall. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm all for like, yeah, I'm a very like family in Australia, Holland, and the Middle East. I um, moved around a lot as well myself, so I, I would like to facilitate that as much as I can, for sure. Yeah, you, before you tell us a bit about your uh, your history, first of all, and then a bit about Ben, I would love to hear about you know, more about Ben and giving yourself a story in there. Uh, at the beginning, but maybe we can do it again. I'm just taking notes because a lot of people wanted me to translate it uh, live. Okay. So I opened up a web and I put it on the thing. So if you guys want to help, uh, we can like translate and so people can understand real time. Um, and we have some people on Periscope visiting us. Uh, so we're using all technologies. We're, 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 we're <laughs> 360 uh, degrees. I'll bring my laptop. Thank you. Thanks, Leo. Um, I think it's I put it on edit mode, but if I haven't, then let me know. Can find and edit. Yeah. Let's see. 
Oh, yeah, I have a question with you. Yeah. Okay, so we want to know like, how important is the cover letter and what's in the text space to the job in your opinion? The cover letter is your portfolio. Um, I'm, I scan a, a res, like I will scan an email for a link and then I'll click the link. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even look at letters. Like, I mean, if somebody has made extra effort and said, and you know, like, make spelling mistakes, you know, because it's about like the detail. But the portfolio is everything. Like, that's all I can. So like someone's personal website? Or? Yeah, personal website, yeah. So that's... Do you think uh, work experience or international work experience is, would be valued here in Vancouver? And how would maybe they demonstrate that or whatever it's important to stand? Um, I think in the working world, I would say Personally, I look for international experience. I think from a design standpoint, exposure to architecture, font types, uh, like fashion, uh, art. Like we, we have an art gallery here in Vancouver, but it's got like Emily Carr, and, and then once in a while it'll have a traveling exhibition. But if you've been to the Louvre in Paris, and you've been to the, the Museum of Modern Art, like then you start to, you know, especially in, I think in the design world, like the more exposure you've had as a designer, um, the more that's going to be a, a benefit for sure. Yeah, fair enough. That's true. Like that diversity is very, very good perspective. Um, can you tell us a bit about the courses you guys offer? Yeah. Sure. Um, so we have uh, three different courses, um, our streams, and three different ways of taking that. So our three courses are um, in digital marketing, uh, in web development. Um, so in web development, we have our intro course, which is called Web Development uh, Foundation, and that's basically just getting into HTML, CSS, response to web design, Git, uh, JavaScript, jQuery, and then we do a little bit of wireframing in there as well. So it's all very, I mean, we, we condense that into 20 classes. Um, and then when you sort of uh, have that level of skill set, you can get into our front-end developer class. And that's a three month long period, and that's when you're getting to some more advanced technologies like Angular, for example. Um, you're, you're gonna be a pretty freaking good JavaScript developer by the end of that three month program. Um, and then on the, the third stream is our user experience um, uh, stream, and that's, uh, that's getting into sort of the full cycle of user experience, starting from um, user research to then sort of building up personas, then getting into so sort of like a card sort of like, a, you know, how are we going to do the information architecture and then into like the all levels of fidelity for, for prototypes. Um, and then so I mentioned we have our three streams and our three ways of taking the class classes. So we have starting July 13th, our part time classes, which are two nights uh, um, a week from six to nine. Um, and you also have the option to take them. Uh, all day Saturday, so it's, effect, it's six hours a week. So you need two nights for three hours a night, or six hours on a Saturday, and that's and that's for ten weeks. Um, we also have our summertime programs, which is uh, full time for for four weeks, and it's effectively those twenty classes condensed into one really intensive uh, um, experience. And you're getting a lot of. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. That. <laughs> Um, and then, so with the summertime program where you're taking it full time, you're in a lot of supervised lab one-on-one um, uh, -on -one time with your instructors. Because one thing we actually haven't mentioned is that uh, all of our classes have a six-to-one student-to-teacher ratio. So that's pretty. I mean, that's unparalleled. Nowhere, nowhere else will you will you receive that. Um, so when you're actually working on projects, uh, the amount of feedback that you can get in just one day would be like on par. With you know, the amount of learning that you could try and cram into maybe a month of you trying to figure things out yourself. And then the last one, uh, which starts in September, these, this is the real sort of meat of Red Academy. It's called our professional programs. Um, that's where there's a bit higher bar to get into it. So um, for user experience, there's some base level um, design sort of portfolio that we're looking for. For the web developer program, um, there is a code test for it. And the idea is that um, we don't want to spend too much time in this very sort of kind of elite program covering some really basic concepts. Uh, we want people that are coming into there ready to really start tackling some more um, advanced things. Yeah. Uh, so how did you come to like, through your research and through your stuff? Uh, where, where do you find this, like for video gamers, this is a question. Do you find that there's a lack of people that are 
employable in, in Vancouver for the gaming industry. Yes. Um, we, we won't focus on gaming, but there are um, a friend of mine, Joe, he runs Think Tank Training, and it's a, it's a gaming uh, think, think tank. tank. Think Tank Training. I think it's tttc.ca. Um, but they produce awesome gaming developers, um, and it's a whole world of uh, that's that's it's a whole just, world yeah. of technology, right? And, and I think um, if you go to their school, it's you know they, they, they've designed stuff yeah. in the school itself that looks <laughs> like a video on yeah. the and everything in there is about creating like, 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 three D environments, well, and about gaming characters, and how you build a storyline, uh, and it's a, it's a whole so, art form. In itself, our, our coding classes are focusing on web technology specifically, right? So, how do you design beautiful interfaces? How do you, um, yeah, websites, web applications, a little bit of app development stuff as well. Yeah, so you're opening a school of doing this. I don't have right now. What do you think the environment in Vancouver is like for those industries? I think they call it Vancouver like the Silicon Valley of the North, yeah. and uh, there is a, a big yeah, so Christy Clark, who's our provincial boss, <laughs> whatever you want to call her, um, there was a big push for oil and LNG. That was the big, they hung their coat on this issue, right? They said, we're going to make lots of money. And then, unfortunately, in Russia, they built a big pipeline straight to China, and that's going ahead. Um, and on top of that, solar is doing amazing things, right? So the actual... Um, expected demand for that LNG and the jobs it will bring it's and all of that oil-based yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's also like obviously like it's a not it's not a clean technology. Most people in younger generations oil realizing that it's it's not a great issue to be hanging their hat on. Right? Well, they're looking for something else. So they want their new the new puppy, right? The new and so what they're focusing on is now technology. That's their big thing, and you see them just suddenly in the last few weeks even. A change in tack as to what the provincial government deems to be their number one issue, um, and it's the same with the Vision Party. They they've already been they've been very supportive since the you know they're um, very understanding of what needs to happen to support tech companies in Vancouver. It's a fast growing industry. It's bigger than forestry and mining put together now. Um, you've got some amazing companies in Vancouver. You've got a company that's building the world's only commercially viable quantum computer company called D-Way. Um, what they're doing is like absolutely astonishing. It's uh, they have a, they have a, a, a processor that can do calculations, complex calculations, up to a hundred thousand times faster than the fastest supercomputer that we've ever built. So it's something that could take the fastest supercomputer in the world five hundred years to do, it could do that calculation in under a day. It's, it's certain types of calculations. It's kind of weird, crazy stuff. Like a lot of physicists like quantum physics. It's magic. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like it's a one and a zero, and we don't know how, but we can see that it is doing that. So that's happening here in, in, in Burnaby. And uh, yeah, and then you've got Slack, which has obviously just become like yeah. in one year became a $3 billion company. You've got um, like Hootsuite's a big player. You've got like a whole load of like second like software companies that you think, oh, I think I've heard of that. There are like two, three hundred people. We've got Clio, it's growing really fast. Yeah. Bench, a lot. A lot. Getting a load. I'm down to Yeah. I, I think you didn't mention Hootsuite yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, and there's a really, really vibrant startup scene coming out of Vancouver as yeah. well. It's really neat to see. So you have like every, you've got the full spectrum of um, types of companies that uh, should be in the tech industry in Vancouver. Very much like Silicon Valley. What about motion graphics and like film and stuff like that, like three D design for films? I thought Lego Movie was made here, mm -hmm. and then Sony uh, Digital Works yeah, is opening some, up. Some something's made here, but part of the industry moved to Montreal and Toronto because of taxes. Mm. And some stay here. This is close in Canada after a while. Yeah, but it has a lot of marketing actually here, but. You have to see which kind of area because it's so it's, it's bigger the field actually. You have a lot of options. Yeah. yeah. Um, so motion graphics, Theo asked that question. Mm -hmm. um, let's go through some questions in the audience uh, online. 
Um, how do Canadians take Brazilian professionals in general? Um, what's your guys' opinion of Brazil? I have, I have a big spot. Uh, or a Brazil. Yeah. 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 So um, this is not no, a lot of question at all. I the Brazilian, uh, Thiago. He was, uh, he's, a, he's a lot of fun. Like, he's definitely like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's definitely on the fun end of the spectrum. Um, I think, like, seeing from what I've seen of like web technology and design, I think it's actually quite an advanced country, like internationally, there's definitely a good eye for design. Um, yeah. What about I can't say I have too much experience. To call it's a very job. safe answer. <laughs> <laughs> I can cool. make something up. But <laughs> well, let's talk about the stereotypes. Like, what do people stereotypically see from an international, um, not just Brazilian, but an international employee? Like, are there any negative? Negative connotations. If so, why? Uh, if not, why not? How do you see Vancouver as a global tech company? Well, yeah, I think like for, for me, when I arrived in Vancouver, I um, did notice there's an element of like they don't care what you've done somewhere else. Like um, there, there there may also be an element like if I'm completely open, I think that there's an element of like. Uh, these people are international. We'll get them a bit cheaper. They, they, and there's an element of that, right? That's just it's not quite right in terms of the power balance. But I had to do that for three years. I had to sit there and say, "Yes, boss. <laughs> you, boss." <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the dynamic. But what I would say is that the, the and places in the world, so I sound English and. But and I kind of talked to Canadians about it. Like oh, I'll never be a real Canadian if, even if I get my citizenship. I won't be a real Canadian because I won't sound Canadian. And every Canadian says, "No, no, no you'll be a real Canadian. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be one of us." You know. So, so it's, I would say super interesting. Like in the world, I'd say the most integrated country, and will only become more like that. There's only 30 million people here. Yeah. We need a lot more people. Yeah, it's a yeah. big country. Yeah, so yeah, there's about 250,000 new people that get PRs in, the, in Canada every year. Wow. And that number is expected like to grow. That's like 1% of the country added every year. Yeah, yeah. so okay. one, in a, one in 100 people. That's so the market grows by 100 people. Um, anyway, so let's take some questions again from the audience. Uh, someone wants to know, like, what are the top tech skills that are most needed uh, in Vancouver? Like, what, what skills both on the front end Back end, maybe social media side in general, are kind of the highest in demand that you've seen. Uh, and and what, how can someone get into those skills? Yeah. I'd say well, coding wise, it's like your front end, right? Like JavaScript is yeah. 80% of tech jobs. Yeah. Is jobs. Well, right? JavaScript is like number one. And I would say the discussion around Ruby versus PHP versus that whole thing, like PHP is still like. The number one web technology is 40% yeah. of the internet is PHP. Um, nobody even talks about ASP and .NET and Microsoft technologies and kind of like yeah. um, except if the company is like specifically built everything already in that. Is the Microsoft is actually right next door, right? They just like share a building with you guys. Yeah. Oh, then in that case, ASP yeah. and .NET. <laughs> are really, right. they're listening in on us right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's Bill. Well, this is <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's okay. So front end, um, what you need is JavaScript, um, and then what else? Are there, like Node.js or Angular or you know other HTML, CSS, like general design, graphic. Yeah, definitely Photoshop. HTML, CSS, all the JavaScript libraries. Yeah. 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 Cool. How about like for the designer? But, well, I mean, I, th I think the big thing that you're starting to see is that um, visual designers and UX designers, yeah. that's starting to become the same thing. Like, and if you're a, like a graphic designer that doesn't understand UX, yeah. you've got to make that cross into yeah. that space, right? Because uh, there's just, I mean, there's so few things that are just like packaging or posters or even like outdoor, like nobody reads newspapers. So, well, when I was at like, university in Canada, I was not I worked more in the agency there. 
Well, it is it's different because when you're drafting, you have your Kansas is only that, and uh, when you go to ads or any uh, mobile, you have to think about interaction and, and how the user is going to you know, don't make me use some things, it's like one famous book. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So Steve you have, yeah. this is a very good point for a start. And uh, make easy, and website has to look like less than four seconds. Yeah. Now if they say, oh, your website has to, to look less than two seconds. Mm -hmm. Because the user is, the internet is fast and fast, and you have to analyze, and you don't, you cannot put a lot of images. You know, it's cool, but sometimes it doesn't work for your 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 market. Mm -hmm. You're just like a company for um, I don't know, finance. You don't put in like all the splashes and animation. It's not a for this market. Yeah. All yeah. Like that. yeah. I hope that's all <laughs> <laughs> And what about for the back end? Like you talked about Ruby, PHP, all these other web technologies like what about database and infrastructure and these kind of things? But I mean, I, th I think mobile. I think we should talk about as well. Yeah, I mean, our, our programs focus very much on shorter programs. Right, we start with three month professional programs. So that means that with the foundation, you basically got four months of education. So I think getting a junior front end developer that's like, okay, I need to get this, I need to move it across the page. That stuff you can learn. Can you become a good back-end developer in four months? No. No, you can't. Um, yeah. And I would say that there are these boot camp programs that are delivering like the, I'm not going to name any names, but there are a lot of boot camps that say you can become full stack in eight weeks. And from someone from the industry, like hearing that promise being made, it's kind of like um, disrespectful. And yeah, it's dishonest to yeah. say that. And so I think that the, um, you know, where, where Red ends up long term is we're focusing on front end development and we're not concentrating on any of the back end programming because it takes a long time to learn that properly. But I think, like our level three programs, which is what we're working on for next year, mm -hmm. is to get a proper you know, one year or 18 month program that actually goes through more like a comp site approach, but not necessarily as in depth into um, some of the stuff that you might right. really need to know to, to right. get working. Very cool. So you're going to kind of build up the person yeah. interested, someone who knows nothing about the internet, how do they get online? I mean, I remember I created my first website with WordPress, and I still use that. And you guys, you guys teach WordPress. Yeah. Um, can you talk about maybe the advantages of, of WordPress for someone who doesn't know how to code and how that can help them now be a, a person that's online and um, like has a web presence, e commerce or what whatnot? Yeah, I think. Um, like again, WordPress is 70% of all CMS driven websites at WordPress, 70 million websites. Um, it's, it's obviously like the most widely adopted tool. It's really simple to use, it's really good on SEO. Yeah. So, like, you can create visibility really quickly. Lots of plugins. So, if you don't know how to build something, you can just buy something for 30 bucks and stick yeah. it in there. It usually works on most devices. Yeah. And if it doesn't, you just uninstall it, yeah, send an angry email. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's it's really easy to use, and I think uh, you know that that's you know if you were 15 years ago, you wanted to build a big e-commerce site, you'd spend half a million dollars. If you want to build something quickly now, you can go on Shopify, you can buy a site, and you know, you pay for the license, and you're up and running. So I think it's more about knowing how to make like how to have a business online than really specifically knowing a, a tool set. Because I mean, in my case, it was like this. I learned more how to use the web to grow what my ideas are, mm -hmm. not necessarily build an app that has a certain database or a specific kind of thing and like be really focused on the how. It was more like the what and the why. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, this is the who, like who do mm -hmm. I want to impact through my web presence. Um, and then out of that, you can just kind of create it with many different tools that are constantly evolving and you're always learning about them. But maybe we can finish on the whole art of digital marketing. Because I think that's something that's super interesting, changing rapidly. I remember when I was at university, and I studied at, at was known as decent youth school, but they taught me the four P's of marketing. And it was like 2009, and I was like, what, what are you talking about? Super. Yeah, what is the four P's? It's something that was created in the 60s. You guys all seen that Mad Men episode <laughs> where what's your name goes to ask for the, the professor, and he's like, yeah, we're in the four P's. And I'm going on a rant because now marketing has changed so much. There's so much data being created. 
so much information you can leverage. Um, what do you guys see as like the cutting edge of digital marketing, and maybe what are the, what are the trends that you guys are excited about? I mean, I think I think everything is like increasingly social, right? So social media analytics, because the nice thing about digital is like if I'm a business and say I can sell this for uh, one dollar, or I make a dollar profit for every one of these that I sell. If I go and buy some TV ads or I buy like you know on whatever offline ads, and um, I have no real understanding, my my sales might go up, but I don't know whether it's TV or whether it's the bus ad or whatever. Um, so what you're seeing is like a lot of the digital stuff is very very trackable, right? So Google Analytics, so if you're any kind of online buying, you can say, oh, that many clicks, that many conversions. I spent a hundred dollars and it made me two hundred dollars. As a business, that is the one piece of information that you want to know. So you go, okay, now I've spent five thousand, so I can make ten thousand. Right? So you want to know that that gearing for your marketing spend. So with social media, it's it's been kind of a bit vague, right? You put something online and then some people share it, but how many people really um, shared it? And, so you're seeing a lot more tools coming in, like Hootsuite's developing a load of them, but there's yeah. hundreds of different tools out there that are about social media analytics. Yeah. And it's how can you, um, you know, it, 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 online is really just a, a, a digital representation of what happens in the real world. Um, like, for example, why did, why did you buy that phone? Why did I? Because I don't like Apple. <laughs> but why, why did you pick that one, or what was the process? No, probably it was, uh, and I know I, I was Googling Facebook, and first I had the, when I Googled LG, the next second was in my Facebook page, LG stuff, all yeah, around yeah. my page. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I started realizing which one was the best cost benefit among these owners. I want the LG, but why LG3, G3 and not the G4 that was done? Mm -hmm. And then I was trying to make my balance, I see some, I saw some, Testimonials and then I have I have many converted. Yeah. So it's really that that whole process is like you you start by searching, then you'll go to review sites, and then like they'll start noticing that search behavior, yeah. and they'll start advertising on your social media feed. Yeah. Um, but I mean the good thing is, is that you can't really fake it. I right? like I me mean, sort of can, and people will try to. But at the end of the day, it's about can you deliver a great product or service. And if you can do that, then people will talk about it online and then you'll sell the products and services. So it's kind of cool that it's you know that transparent now. Cool. And you guys teach uh, what specifically Facebook analytics or all uh, Google analytics? You'd have to ask Katie, but it's all social media analytics and she's uh, yeah, so Katie's run a number of startups herself. We've got the um, the ex the old director of community from Hootsuite teaching the evening program. Nice. Um, and the guy that was like the digital marketing manager for Best Buy. As oh, really? well as HSBC, like oh, really? all of the paper Do I know stuff. Him? Maybe Ronnie Tajan? That's not thing about Ronnie. I never met him. I was working on the e-commerce side of the digital marketing so. Very, very jolly Indian guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I met him at the thing. Okay, yeah. He's from Best Buy, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 What did he yeah. yeah, coffee. Interesting. I want to get his name of the company. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, what about LinkedIn? How important is that? You talked about your portfolio website, but do recruiters or do you guys look at LinkedIn at all? Does that make a difference? I think I think the portfolio is important to see the work, but you will look at LinkedIn to see whether anybody's left any reviews, because nobody does reference checks. Like, that's the truth. Like, as an employer, you get references, but you're not going to phone up somebody or even, I, I've never done it, never done it. but I will, will go on someone's LinkedIn profile and just see, like, have there been more than one person saying it? it's a good guy, it's a good person to work with? Cool. It's, it's also a really good tool to find people if a company is actually looking. Right. So that's another good point. So have you ever used it to look for talent? Or do you know how the process works? Yeah, I mean, we were looking for instructors at Red and we were going through sort of all the different people that we know um, through our LinkedIn network. Right. So if someone connects with someone in your network, like me, then they connect to you guys and kind of from there. Cool. So, guys, any other questions? We're going to have like 10, 15 more minutes left. I have a question. Of course. Um, I was, I went to the press street online and I started having like an interview with them. Mm -hmm. Here, so you're saying that 
Better Family hopes to increase the number of women in the tech industry. Yeah. Um, so how do you see that? So in the right range, I mean, coding and digital marketing. Yeah, so digital you, marketing, we don't have that, that problem really. Uh, yeah, I it's actually that. fairly fairly even. And in design, it's better. But I think with uh, I think with coding, like girls get told at a young age, like, you can't code, that's yeah. boys' stuff, right? Um, like, all three of our lead instructors are girls. It wasn't by design, it just happens to be that way. Um, and I mean, I, I think it's one of those things, it's not so much that we're like, you know, women should be in tech, it's just that like, anybody should be feel comfortable in tech. And I think there's lots of um, companies that can be very, um, like, waspy, as they call it, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant males. And you see that a lot in business, especially, well, especially in the, in the higher levels of business. And that sets a culture that's kind of like, no, 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 this is kind of how we do things and like people have to fit in. And I think modern companies, you think of Google or Facebook or any of the successful uh, great companies, um, they simply just to say like everybody's welcome and we want anybody from any gender or background, whatever, um, to feel that they can, that they're welcome here. So um, our school isn't like, you know, women power or whatever, it's just like everybody's welcome and we happen to have a predominantly female staff and um, the other major investor is a really powerful woman from Toronto and does a lot of promotion of the female uh, net promoter women in tech. Um, so it's it's one of our agendas. So we do have a discount for girls who want to get into coding professional programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's cool. more that yeah. a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So who's like a perfect student for you? Like where should they be in their mind? Like what stage should they be in their life? Like what are they should they looking to be want, wanting to do? Like who are you guys looking for to join? Um, well we've seen like three very clear personas come out. Um, there's uh, definitely a group of people that are graduating from uh, university that uh, don't feel like they have enough work ready skills. Um, the sort of anthropology grad that's like, oh my god, there's not a lot of anthropologists that need it. Um, so there's that person. Um, there's someone who is um, in their career that's looking to um, maybe make a change or upgrade their skills. So I made a, I mentioned earlier that um, we've been approached by a couple people in PR that are looking to upgrade their skills in digital marketing because it's a new skill set that's required of them. Um, and then I'd say that, um, and, and in there there's also a lot of people who um, might not be so pleased with their current job um, and they see an opportunity again in the tech industry to become um, someone who's able to become be very autonomous and creative uh, uh, and you look at sort of the job, job satisfaction uh, numbers within the tech industry, it's insane. It's, it's like 85% of people are either uh, happy or very happy with their work um, environments and sort of their, their work life. Um, and then the third is uh, entrepreneurs. So Ilya, you're mentioning this of how um, you know you kind of were just trying to learn how to use the web to um, see your ideas uh, realized. Uh, there's a lot of people that are looking to get those tech skills to um, either build their business or better manage a tech team. Themselves. Is it easier to open a company here, like if you're an entrepreneur, than from other companies? How what's the process of just like? Opening in Vancouver or Canada. Canada I mean, Canada. It's just a fairly well-supported um, ecosystem. Uh, there's a, a number of, of different things, like Spring, for example, where um, <laughs> uh, representing yeah. the green. You guys yeah. are right. <laughs> Spring is green. Yeah. Um, it's like if you have a, a great idea, um, so motivation, the gumption to sort of create your own company, um, people will. This would be my experience. Um, do as much as they can to help you support and support you to be successful. Um, and I think a lot of times, um, I mean, support and sort of having the right connections will take you so far. But if you couple that with um, having the actual right skill set as well, um, then that's that's a winning recipe. Nice. So are you guys going to be having any kind of courses for entrepreneurs, or is it just like? These skills. Well, I didn't think of all of our secrets, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. 
Um, awesome. we, we do have um, on the site live right now, um, so get, is it get live or Shopify? Or so you get your, anyways, it's, yeah. it's effectively, um, uh, it's a five week course where uh, we go through um, the whole steps of sort of defining the business model to sort of um, creating your first Shopify class to creating a digital strategy to then get that um, shop uh, sort of out to the people that you yeah. to your target audience. Um, awesome. So then the managing of it. Um, so it's, it's a condensed version. Uh, so it's only five weeks and you're getting the, the essentials. Yeah, yeah. yeah perfect. Um, it's all about that ROI, right? And yeah. I love how you guys focus on that with digital marketers because I feel like a lot of people just get lost in the actual product. Which is a great thing to worry about, but at first, you can remember the learning and how the funnels are. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, there's no other school that I know that teaches funnels in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone wants to do something like that? Could be a good idea. Um, One other thing, like, if, so you look at people like, like either don't have skills or can't find jobs in their own industry, what are the salary ranges that you are tied to the things that you teach for upon graduation in those industries, uh, given that they're huge demand and all I mean, I, I think in the programs that we're creating right now, I think um, I would say that the entry level, like 45 to 55, depending on the company, is typical for like an entry level um, position. Um, I would say with the digital marketing thing, it can be different because some people have got already a lot of marketing experience, but they're then now adding this digital marketing skill set onto it. So um, that can be hugely. And different. And that can be like proper that entry level, like literally, we need someone to help us with our social media. And um, you're also seeing a lot of people that are like, you know, doing twenty five dollars an hour and they're going around working for different businesses and doing social media management. Is there a rise in the kind of contract worker? Is that trend you're just saying? For sure, you see co working spaces. Yeah. It's like it's that whole idea of like if you have a company, like the last thing you want is like you know hundreds of people on your books. Yeah. If you have, especially if things are project driven, things move really quickly now. Yeah. So you want to be able to like hire up quickly, and maybe you only want somebody for one day a week, yeah. two days a week. So yeah, that's actually a really good way of doing, especially small companies with different skill sets. So they're not going to like now bring all these people on staff. So. Yeah, yeah. But I think the really cool thing about um, the finding the developer course as well is that it's really like. It's the perfect course if you want to become a freelance uh, web designer, a web developer, say, uh, because there's not that many jobs for people to be a full stack developer that's at a junior level because not a lot of people are, are willing to give their project that you're building front end and back end to someone who is so green to the industry. Um, but there's so many people, out there. everyone needs their own website. And if you're building a beautiful website that has all the functionality and sort of back end taken care of by WordPress, um, if you're not getting employed by some of the large companies in, in, in Vancouver, there's an incredible amount of opportunity out there to um, freelance your, on yourself. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. For yourself. Okay. For yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Awesome. And Any other this questions? thought maybe you can use for digital marketing too. Yes. They need to be in social media too. Awesome. Um, let's see if there's any last questions from online. Uh, we got maybe seven or eight more minutes. Um, so we talked about opening a business. We're looking for that. How about Git, GitHub? Is GitHub important? Just quickly, yes or no? Very yes. important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome, cool. GitHub's important. What are like the three or four things that are super important for, for someone to have for you to consider hiring them? Like personal website, LinkedIn, GitHub. Is there Two or three other things. For, for a coding position, or yeah, coding or marketing. Uh, I mean, the, the the thing that I'm now hired for is about well-directed energy in that person. So, like the team that we put together, they have sort of very, uh, you know, it's a combination of different people in the room and like a high-performance team tends to yeah. have kind of like high energy levels and also positivity and uh, sort of like the, the can-do attitude. But I think if you, so, so number, number one, like so it's, it's like attitude is the number one thing. Like if somebody's like, I really want to build cool stuff or I want to make something amazing, um, 
that is worth more than somebody that has lots of experience, but it's just like, uh, you know, I'd rather have people young and hungry than have people that kind of like, ah, uh, earn my stripes, I don't need to work hard. Nice. Yeah, because you're trying to build something pretty big, right? Both yourself and the companies you guys are going to create. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. Good. yeah, yeah. That's good. It'll happen. Yeah. So, um, how can someone participate if they want to get started at Red Academy? Can they talk to one of you guys or someone else? Um, is there an email I can write into the chat? Um, well, I, I would say that uh, you can go into the website um, and uh, we have the apply now um, button. So, that's the first step in actually getting involved in class. But if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to reach me at matt at redacademy.com um, and uh, answer any questions there. Um, we have our sort of course overviews, um, which is uh, just a, a three-page PDF document, which I can send to anyone that has an interest in a specific class. Um, yeah, let's say check our website or, or email me. Pretty simple, straightforward ways. Uh, okay, great. Um, so, anyone else in the room have any questions? Um, I have one. Yeah, please. So, techvibes.com, that's Jackie, and it says you'll be offering free digital course, I don't know, from July 6th to July 10th. So, what's about? Thanks, you tell me about that? Yeah. yeah, so next week we're yeah. doing, uh, we're basically opening the school up, but we have yeah. three, three classes in everything that we're teaching, but really just at entry level. Mm -hmm. um, so, with digital marketing, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know what that is, or I think it sounds too technical. Or, um, so it's really an opportunity, like we have, I think, still spaces left in a lot of those things. So like if people are interested to come and try a class and you want to know what UX is or you want to know what kind of coding courses we're teaching, then um, just come in and say hi and come deal with us in the evening. So, Can we cool. just show up or should we apply online as well as So you make sure that you've got, you've got it. Yeah, okay. so there's different places. So if you go on our website, um, mm -hmm. we've done a, a homepage takeover, and you just click on um, book your spot now, I think oh, it's. Okay. Yeah, 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 the there, yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, it would be really cool if we can bring some guys from Brazil to do some courses, too. It'd be great, yeah. 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 Maybe we could go to Brazil to <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're having a tour to Brazil in November, actually. So we're going to be at uh, Case, which is the biggest startup. A com uh, conference of the year in November. Oh, wow. So yeah, it'll be for like three days in the first week, Great. and we're gonna have a Van Hack booth, and we're gonna try and showcase a couple of Canadian companies there at the booth, and we're also helping a couple startups come down. Um, I'm down to be one of them. So we're awesome. yeah, we'll we'll be there, um, and if you guys want to come, November Brazil could be a nice time. It's summer already. Right? I think we'll have to go past that way anyway. Yeah. That's kind of on the way to. Well, I was thinking, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that sounds great. Cool, but well, worst case, we can do like a webinar from there to here. Um, all right, so I guess the last thing I want to say, I think I'm going to speak Portuguese for the people who understand it there in the internet. So I'm going to speak in Portuguese for like five minutes. Okay. Um, primero, I wanted to see if you're listening to me on the internet. Hi, pessoal. Yeah. Vocês estão entendendo o meu português? Só para... Está ok? Um, então, a gente está querendo trazer alguém do Brasil para fazer um mês aqui no Vancouver e queremos faz fazer ali como um exemplo de que a gente pode fazer com todo mundo ajudando em, em transformar a vida de alguém em pouco tempo. Uh, durante esse mês, a pessoa vai ter um tour personalizado da cidade com a gente Uh, vamos para Seattle, vamos para Rocky Mountains com West Track. Um, e também vamos ter aulas práticas de inglês, uh, aulas de inglês para IELTS, uh, meetups do Alessia aqui, uh, várias, cada, cada dois, três semanas, uh, dois, três por semana. Uh, e outra coisa que a gente está fazendo é abrindo um rede de apartamentos uh, onde já moram empreendedores, ou programadores, ou designers canadenses que tem um lugar para a pessoa viver com ele. Então, a gente está criando um novo tipo de homestay. Uh, homestay to that hack, coisa assim, homestay startups. 
Um, então, vamos ter uma pessoa que vem para cá em agosto já, vamos ter Francis. Um, e também vamos ter várias outras pessoas, já temos várias pessoas aplicando, e isso vai só crescer nos próximos meses. Mas, para quem está me escutando lá na internet, um, o link é vanhack.com.br intercâmbio, e você pode ver uh, como entrar na rifa. Então, você pode pegar pelo menos, tipo, uh, 25 até 100 reais para ganhar essa possibilidade, a gente precisa vender, a gente não quer ganhar dinheiro com isso, a gente está querendo vender até o, o, fechar nossas contas. Para a pessoa já vem para cá e não gasta dinheiro, não, tipo, não tem nenhum custo sobrando. Um, então, se você vai para esse link, eu espero que você goste e a gente vai tentar de trazer alguém para cá e depois criar um funil de trazer brasileiros para o Canadá. Uh, so, what I was just saying um, is that um, we are uh, creating a new kind of way for people to come to Canada um, where they can live with a member of the Vancouver Tech community, um, kind of like a, not a homestay, but like an Airbnb with the guy who's from the community or girl. Uh, we closed our, our first one. It's going to be right on May 7th and trying to like, position five or six strategic places. So if you're the only one with the couch, <laughs> let me know. Um, and we're going to be doing a draw. So to launch VanHack Intercombi, which is our exchange program, we're doing a draw where um, we all we just want to cover the cost of flight, a week of, sorry, a, a month of uh, English classes, a month of meetups, a month of like, tours, um, a month of homestay. Um, if we can break even on that, then we'll have the person come and we want to try and set them for August for them to come in like September, October. Mm -hmm. um, or another time if whenever they want. But uh, I guess it, it's been really cool. Like people have been asking a lot of questions, people are excited. Um, what do you guys think like kind of next last question? Uh, three to five years is gonna be like for the Vancouver type of system. Like what do you guys see specifically about the city that might be unique on a global scale? Um, and why do you guys think that people should come to Vancouver to learn about Three to five years, eh? That's a long time in tech. Um, I mean, I think I think the tech scene is already the, the, the biggest industry. Like you're seeing that these fast growth companies, like so, where are they in three to five years? I would say, you know, the Silicon Valley of the North thing. I think that that's very uh, mm -hmm. very likely to happen. I think um, Vancouver is a, a beautiful city. I mean, it's the most beautiful city in the world, according to many. Um, so, I mean, I, I think there's definitely going to be political shifts here that place much more emphasis on that. And once people start to realize how much um, economic power there is in the tech sector and much more so than in, you know, in oil and some of these kind of older resource-based mm -hmm. um, ideas. Um, so, yeah, so I think we'll see it growing a lot. It's, even in six years I've been here, it's, it's changed a lot. Yeah, so, awesome. Society. Cool. Uh, any last questions from the audience? Okay. Um, thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for participating online. Obrigado a todo mundo. A gente vai terminar aqui. Um abraço e tchau.